Welcome to Fort Collins Living History. My name is Joe Kademi, the principal for Kennard Cornellis Junior High School, Poudre School District's newest junior high school. And today we have the unique opportunity and honor to be here to talk with our namesake, coach, Mr. Hal Kennard, and three students from Kennard. I'd like to introduce everybody. First, this is coach Hal Kennard. We have Claire Bieber. We have Brian Hartley, and we have Nina Askew. And the students are going to be asking uh, Mr. Kennard questions. Uh, but before we get into that, I wanted to uh, just say a few words about our history and how we started out at Kennard. Very unique situation. Uh, I think we're one of the only schools, maybe the only school in Poudre School District history, that was in operation before we had a name. And so uh, three years ago, uh, we had a year to plan the school, but we didn't have our own building, we didn't have our own name, we didn't have students, we didn't have staff, um, but what we had was a vision. We had a vision of the kind of school that we wanted to become. And as we described that school, uh, how we wanted to treat each other, the standards for excellence that we wanted to have around our behavior as well as our academic achievement, um, the uh, character qualities associated with uh, the kind of people we wanted to become, uh, it became more and more clear to us what we were all about. And then when Hal Kennard's name was nominated and then selected, uh, it, in, in his, his career, um, uh, as we analyzed his career and, and looked at all the incredible relationships he had developed over 40 years in Poudre School District, uh, we were amazed and so thankful to find out that he was the embodiment of what we were trying to become. And so uh, we're very honored and very privileged for the last couple of years. Um, Coach Kennard has gotten to know the students and our three students here today, incredible students I might add, are uh, leaders at our school and have really uh, gotten to know Coach Kennard over the last couple of years. So they've got some questions to ask and I'd like to ask you, Claire, if you would uh, begin. Well, Mr. Kennard, just to get started, um, would you please give us an overview of your childhood and school years up till college? Okay. <clears throat> I was born in uh, Holt, Alabama, and that's right outside of Tuscaloosa. And the reason uh, we lived down there, my father was uh, worked at a paper mill. And then through the years, we moved into uh, town and to Tuscaloosa, and I went to Ferner Elementary right by the Denny Stadium there in Alabama Stadium. And my father wanted to be a welder, so we moved to Shreveport, Louisiana. And then he became a welder there, and uh, he, a man that owned the school sold it and came to Denver to, uh, I brought my father with him to be the uh, shop manager and everything. So that's how we got to Denver. And then from there, I went to, uh, Fairmont Elementary for one year, and uh, that's down on the west side, down in Denver, by, between Santa Fe and Broadway off of Sixth Avenue. Then I attended Baker Junior High School down there, and then I went to uh, West High School for four years. And at the time at West High School, I played basketball and that sort of thing, and then that's kind of the way I got to Denver, and uh, I'm a member of a family of four. I have uh, two brothers, I mean one brother and two sisters. And my mother and father are both passed away. They lived into their 90s. So that's kind of uh, where we are, at least uh, right now. And uh, that's where we got to be uh, at this point. Um, what was school life for you as a kid? Well, school life for me as a kid, I moved. Uh, you have to remember, in elementary school, it's pretty good to have stability. But I went to four different schools, a country school, a city school in Tuscaloosa, a city school in Shreveport, and a city school in Denver. So my elementary years were pretty uh, tough because uh, I lived in, uh, I went to school in three different states and four different schools. And uh, as you well know, with the continuity, there is kind of rough. And uh, yeah, so I, I had trouble as a student when I was younger because of that. What did you do with your family during your childhood years? Well, mostly in the childhood years, I used to hoe, uh, you know, help them in the garden. Down in the south, we had a garden, and my dad also, we had 80 acres that we lived on, 
So I helped uh, with chores around the house. One of mine, we had no electricity. We didn't have any uh, <coughs> running water or indoor facilities. So one of my chores was <coughs> carrying water from the spring for drinking water. And then we had uh, some creeks that we uh, used for our clothes washing and stuff like that. So I did a lot of chores. And mostly I just did what my father told me to do. <laughs> Was high school the first time you were involved with sports? Yes, when I moved into West Denver, <clears throat> I had never, I didn't understand much about basketball. Because in the South, we were football, mostly football and baseball at that time. And uh, so on the neighborhood there, we, we learned to play basketball across the street at, uh, in the, by the street lights. And we just uh, played on a dirt court at Baker at that time. And uh, I just got a love for basketball, and I just played all the time. Matter of fact, my folks never thought I was going to come home to eat. And <laughs> even on my way home from West High School practicing, I'd get into a pickup game. So I just played basketball. We'd play into the night sometimes on this, by the street lights to about 11. And, uh, you know, if you're going to play basketball and uh, you want to excel, you have to really spend a lot of time on your skills and learning to be a competitor. Um, what was it like to play basketball at CSU? Well, at CSU, when I played at West, uh, we were about the last two teams uh, back in 1950 and 51 to go to the state tournament from West. We <coughs> lost in the state finals to Manuel High by three points. And, the, and then the next year, we lost in the semis to Greeley Central. And uh, so the state tournaments is where I got uh, some recognition. And then Bill Stranigan, who was the coach at CSU at that time, Colorado a and at that time, uh, recruited me, and uh, there was about five schools that were interested. But my high school coach told me, Gaston Santi was my high school coach, and I was confused, and he said, well, Hal, he says, just go up to Fort Collins and uh, work hard and keep your head on your shoulders, and that's probably as good as you can do. So later on, when playing basketball here, I played three years for Bill. We went to, to the NCAA tournament, played in the final 16, and lost to Santa Clara. Then he left to go to, he got a better job because we had a good record, <laughs> so we coached his operate. Coach Williams came over from uh, Utah. I played my senior year for Coach Williams, who was, by this way was one of my main mentors in life for me. And uh, he, he also had me coach his freshman the following year. Then when I came out of the Army, I was a graduate assistant or a varsity assistant for two years for him while I was working on my master's. So I really learned a lot about life and basketball and uh, a lot to, for Coach Williams really helped me. And Gaston Sandy, my high school coach, and Bill Stranigan and Coach Williams were the main factors for me in uh, college basketball. And so after that, like when did you start coaching yourself? Well, when I, when I came out of, uh, I was coaching there, helping Coach Williams. And then he also got me a job at Waverly High School. And we were the Waverly Mustangs. And that's how we became, uh, Joe and I talked about that. That's how we got the name of Mustangs. It was between the Falcons and the Mustangs. And I said, well, Joe, I started off as a Waverly Mustang, and I'd like to end up as a Mustang if we can do that. <laughs> so that's how that came to pass. But then I had a coaching job at Waverly. And we, my teammates, my students out there were farm kids. They worked really hard. And we, we just got our brains beat out about every game. But they kept coming back, and I learned a lot from those kids of not giving up. So it was a very interesting time. And also, during that time, I was working on my master's, and then we consolidated into the school district. And then when I came in, Mr. Ray Cruz hired me at Lincoln Junior High, and I became a basketball coach, football coach, and track coach there for about 18 years or so. And, uh, I enjoyed it. I stayed at the level of junior high school because I felt junior high was my, my place, my calling. I related better to the junior high kids. Main reason is because they have so much energy and life. And like you, you guys, they are real. I mean, they, they will let you know exactly what they think. And, <laughs> and you don't have to question yourself too much if you're making an impact. But <clears throat> junior high school was a great place. And it still is a great place. Um, so what was your favorite coaching moment? Well, one of my big coaching moments, I don't know, I had 
you have so many of them. I guess, I guess actually, the thrill of me uh, coaching at uh, junior high school level was, at that time there were only two junior highs, Lesher and Lincoln, and of course at that time we played Longmont, uh, Laramie, Cheyenne, Sterling, Long, you know Loveland. Well, my biggest moments was always when I beat my crosstown rival, <laughs> Lesher. <laughs> So, and Coach Weitzel, he was good. He's a good friend of mine to this day. Coach Bob Ferguson too, also was a coach over there. Um, so, when did you start to teach? Well, I was I was teaching then. That I was teaching at Waverly. Also, as a coach, I had teaching responsibilities. I taught uh, girls PE <laughs> there also, and we played volleyball most of the time. It was kind of a new experience for me. And then we moved into Lincoln. Physical education was separated at that time. And at the old Lincoln, we had a big curtain that we had to roll down, up and down by hand. And the girls were on one side with uh, Mrs. Caroline Shannon, and uh, I was on the other side with the boys, and uh, it was kind of, nobody was supposed to look around the curtain, you know. That was pretty much of a chore, keeping that going. But uh, teaching at Lincoln was really great. Lincoln was a great school at that time. I don't know how it is today, but it was really a nice school to work at. We had a lot of great teachers. I worked with guys like Mr. Blevins, Mr. Cruz, Mr. Linton, uh, you know, all the, the namesakes of a lot of these schools, and uh, they were all there. And So I really enjoyed my Lincoln years. Coach, one of the things that I have found incredible getting to know you these last three years is the people that you've, you worked with 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, um, how they remember you, the impact that you made on their lives. One of the things that uh, um, comes up frequently is uh, this motto that you had, uh, you can and you will. Yes. I was wondering if you could just talk to us a little bit about what that meant and how it worked. <laughs> well, it, uh, it doesn't sound as good now as it did then. But uh, when I first went into Lincoln, uh, Lincoln was different at that time because it moved, the lecture opened, and that was the first year, and we're talking about moving the ninth grade into the high school now, mm -hmm. that was the first year in a long time that they held the ninth grade back into the ninth grade. Mm -hmm. So the entire year we had to listen to, for the ninth graders, I didn't get to go to the new school, and I can't go to high school, and here I am at Lincoln, but you know, as, as that year went on, I think they were appreciated being there at the old Lincoln. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know that you can and you will. I, I thought when I came in there, I was out of the army and I was, you know, I'd been at Waverly and I was pretty gung ho. And I wasn't married, and so you know, if I got fired, I figured I could get another job. <laughs> but uh, I thought, you know, I need something to latch on to. So I'm gonna make this big sign. So I just made it by hand. I put it way up on the wall so it wouldn't get marked up. <laughs> and so it said, "You can and you will." And I meant it to be positive but I also meant it to be an authority type of thing because I wanted them to know that the PE program had been fairly loose there, but it wasn't gonna be loose anymore. And so the top line, I always told the students, you can, that's you. Mm -hmm. And now we have changed it to we can mm -hmm. because that's more appropriate for today. And then I put it, uh, the bottom line, and you will, I was pretty strict in those days and. So I, that was kind of an authority type thing that I was gonna be the one to try to make them work. And I always appreciated hard work. You know, in our class, kids were always on task. And I found through teaching that the time that destroys you as a teacher is loose free time. You need to have some type of structure going on even if it's a, a student led or something, whatever. But if you give them a lot of idle time in junior high school, you're, you're, you're dead. So you gotta keep them busy. And uh, we made sure we kept them busy. I, just, just one other thing I wanna add is, um, the other thing I was amazed at, when your name was selected, and uh, I began to meet the people that you've had relationships with for many, many years, it became a common occurrence. As they talked about you, they would get emotional, they'd get tears in their eyes. And their feelings towards you were, had run so deep. Mm -hmm. Could you just talk a little bit about how 
you built those relationships. And I know that, mm -hmm. you know, one of the qualities that people describe you as is a very humble man who doesn't like a whole lot of attention on himself. And here we are talking about you, putting you on the spot. <laughs> But can you talk a little bit about, uh, for those of us that can still learn from this, how you build those relationships and develop that, that legacy of relationships? The very main thing to me in teaching is, is relationships. In order to have a relationship, you have to do something other than your curriculum. You stand in front of your curriculum. The curriculum is important, mm -hmm. if I'm wrong but you have to stand in front of it and you try to figure out what makes them tick. Mm -hmm. And I got criticized many times because in my physical education classes, I always called roll. Mm -hmm. I called every student's name and he responded to me every day. Mm -hmm. It took about a minute or mm -hmm. so and everybody said, well, you're wasting time. You can just look and see who's there. Mm -hmm. I says, no, sometimes that's the only time I say that, that uh, student's name during that whole period. So I get to know the students, so I get to know them and what makes them tick. And as you, you have to, I felt loyalty. Mm -hmm. I wanted every Lincoln kid, I'll, I'll tell you, if somebody was doing something to a Lincoln kid, I don't care if it was downtown or wherever it was, if it was a Lincoln student, mm -hmm. I, was their, for, I was their ally. Mm -hmm. Because loyalty can only be built, like we said the other day, loyalty is basically a cross between respect and love. Mm -hmm. You aren't gonna be loyal to people you don't respect. And you probably aren't going to be too loyal to people you don't love or have a real feeling for. Yeah. So <clears throat> I always felt that the Lincoln kids were mine. And uh, as we worked together, they kind of felt the same way. We're all in this together. So that's how you, that's how you build loyalty. Thank you. Nina, thank you for letting me ask a couple questions. Here. Do you have any more? Um, yeah, I was just wondering, through your teaching and coaching career, who influenced you? My first influences in teaching course I was greatly influenced by my father and my mother. <clears throat> you know, I gotta give them credit. <laughs> because my father was one that said, when he said something, that's the way it was. His word was excellent. So, but as I went to high school, Coach Ernie Rossi and Gaston Santi, Ernie Rossi was an old Fort Collins player at one time too. They were my high school coaches and uh, at the tough kids over there in West Side, I was amazed at how well they respected those guys because they didn't put up with any foolishness. So those were my first two mentors that really encouraged me to be a teacher. And then as I went on to college, uh, Coach Williams was another man that uh, when he said something, he meant it. And, uh, and I, I earned a great, great, great respect for him. So those were the three main people probably in education that uh, I would consider my mentors. Then when I got into teaching, Ted Blevins Sr., there was schools named for Mr. Blevins, and Mr. Warner, and uh, you know, uh, Mr. Lenton, and of course Ray Cruz. Ray Cruz really, really is a man that really helped me in teaching. He saved, he saved me from a lot of things. And then Wayne Lenton, and uh, or Rex Wells, and so I had some excellent leadership, but that's the way I got into teaching, through respect for those men. And I know also your wife is a big part of your life, and how did she influence you through your teaching? Well, my, my wife is, uh, <coughs> Caroline Shannon used to say that I taught with, she always sees uh, Sandy and she says, I just have to see the person that made a human being out of him. <laughs> and, Sa and Sandra deserves a lot of credit because she uh, supported me all those years. Who, you know, teaching for 40 years, it, it was a lot of down spots in that 40 years. But uh, she always supported me and, and was always in my corner and always helped me. And so she's a, a great reason that I'm sitting here today. Okay. Um, so how did you feel when you were nominated for the namesake of our school? Kind of awesome. I kind of thought, you know, the way they find, t teach you, the way you find out your name for the school, I didn't think I got it. I was supposed to be one of the top three uh, finalists. There was 25 people nominated, and I didn't hear anything. And all of a sudden, they were gonna announce it that night on uh, Channel 10. And I flipped the channels, and I said, well, I told Sandra, she was talking to my son on the phone, I says, I'm gonna turn over to Channel 10 and see what it's like. I says, uh, I know I didn't get it, because nobody's ever said anything to me. So then all of a sudden, uh, uh, Garth, uh, 
nominates me and then ML seconds it and the other people say it's okay with me and they go boom, 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 and you're, you're, it's you. And I think, huh? That's how it happens? And then Mrs. Trout was the first person to call me and Mrs. Duran came over to that night and uh, it was just, you don't know how to feel. You see all these people that have worked all these years and didn't get much uh, recognition and all of a sudden they're naming a school for you. It's kind of humbling and kind of scary. You know, do you really measure up? And so it's uh, awesome, awesome. And my wife and I decided, we had to decide fairly early that we weren't going to worry about who should have got it, uh, who didn't get it or anything like that. We were just gonna say, hey, we're just gonna have some fun with it. Have a few laughs. Nobody deserves it anyway. <laughs> so everybody gets kind of a piece of it. And if you're a teacher, I, I felt uh, one of the things I uh, was happy about, it was a junior high school, and I'd spent my 40 years with junior high kids. So I felt that was kind of a relationship. And I know you had uh, your, the letters of recommendation for the 70 or so people that yeah. nominated you. How did yeah. you feel like reading those? Well, I'll tell you what, I, I, was, I was just overwhelmed. Overwhelmed at all these people, all these years and different walks of life could write letters for you and uh, I mean, pretty soon you get to thinking, you know, who are they writing about? I mean, <laughs> the letters are so so complimentary and and uh, they remember these little details. You know, remember the time I dropped my lock and you made me do 25 push-ups <laughs> and remember the time you did this? And that's why I've always felt that it's always something small, always a personal thing that kids remember and I've been amazed, and I even, I've received letters since then from students that I thought uh, just were amazed. It's just overwhelming, and as I look to them, I tell you what, it just makes you want to cry. Hmm. So, what has been your favorite moment at the Kennard Junior High now with the students? The best times at junior high school, at Kennard Junior High Core Knowledge, is when you're in the hall and all the kids are swarming around you and they're walking up and down the hall, and they're poking one another, and they're typical junior high kids that are just living life. And it kind of makes you feel like you're alive, and junior high school is a place where life takes place, mm. and transition takes place. It's the best place. Yeah. Did you have another question? Bob? Yeah, uh, so what are your hopes for the future of Kennard Junior High School? Well, I, I feel really blessed that to have students like you guys here, and, and for uh, Mr. Kademi here, Joe, uh, and being a principal, and all Aisha and Willie and all the teachers that are over there, I, I just feel so blessed, and my hope for it is that it continue to be a place of fairness, a place of integrity, a place of honesty, a place where learning takes place, a place where there's no bullies, a place where there's people that uh, are looking out for one another, and uh, I don't worry about Kennard Junior High School being left behind as uh, the most child left behind because that's an academically strong school. And I, my hope is that there's no child left behind socially. Well, we're to the close of our program and I want to just thank you students, Claire, Brian, Nina, your great examples of Kennard character. Our motto, our touchstone is we care and challenge with character, Kennard character. And you've, you embody that. And thank you for the great example that you've set for the seventh and the eighth graders. And Coach, I want to thank you. Thank you for your tremendous commitment to junior high kids, to the values and to the um, uh, things that you have named as, as, as important to building the relationships one-on-one uh, -on -one and in a school community that you've lived this life that we can keep going to and asking ourselves whether or not we're doing a good job. Yeah. So <laughs> when we get together, we get emotional. <laughs> but uh, that, that's, uh, that you just got a lot of love that you've given so many people uh, in this community and we just thank you. Well, thank you, Joe. <clears throat> and remember one thing, relationships take time. You can't be hurried and forming relationships. So when you're talking to a student or something like that, if you're going to build a relationship, you really have to listen to what they're saying. Thank you.